If you haven't watched it, then you definitely heard of it, because everyone in the fandom won't stop frothing at the mouth until every fucking human in the world will watch this show. Oh, I'm sorry, you thought I meant Steven Universe? Or Jojo's Bizarre Adventure? Or Has Been Hotel? Or My Hero Academia? Or Homestuck? It's, it's Miraculous Ladybug. Miraculous Ladybug? Tiki, spots on! Originally planned to be an anime animated in South Korea produced by all these companies. The show was first aired in South Korea, either as a pre-screen or just as a test screen before being aired in France and then the United States. A lot of shows nowadays are being animated by dedicated studios in South Korea. A lot of shows you'll see sharing the art style of Miraculous Ladybug are usually all animated by Method Animation and usually look absolutely freaking gorgeous, except for the other studios that they outsource it to and it doesn't. So there's this girl named Marinette. We'll get back to her later. And then there's this moth man who sends bad moths to people who are angry. And then the moth infects them with even more anger and gives them neato superpowers so long as they bring them the miraculous. Don't forget handsome boy love interest, but this time it's important instead of shoehorned in. Bad person does bad thing, then Marinette uses her chibi friend Tiki to do a magical transformation in order to fight. Whoa, turns out handsome boy love interest has one too. Oh my gosh, they're both heroes who fight bad people and do magical girl transformations. Uh, oh, do I hear a damsel uh, in distress? Some of us don't have night vision. <laughs> This is the only time they mention this power. And then her miraculous gives a random thingamajig and she has to figure out how to use it to save the day, just like Ben 10 or Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Also, she can only use her mysterious mouse katool once before needing to transform back. Then they get a carbo load to regain their powers. And then they clean the bad moth and return it to the Mothman to use again so the show can keep going. Now, Marinette has a crush on Adrian, the handsome boy love interest but Catboy likes Bug Girl because they don't know that they are each other in win in costume. It's not a love triangle. It's a love X? No. It's a love square. The shape of evil. And then there's Chloe, the popular girl bully person who is Adrian's lifelong friend. She's important, just trust me. Also, Adrian is a model, so he's super rich. Also, his dad shares a strong resemblance to Hawk Moth, but I'm sure that's just a coincidence. Yo, nice scarf, Adrian. Yeah, can you believe my dad got this for me? Uh, he's given me the same lame pen for three years in a row. Actually, turns out this was an inside joke because the creator Thomas Astruck had the character concepts from Marinette and Adrian for three years. So really in real life, Adrian has existed for three years and Thomas gave him an imaginary pen in his mind every freaking year for his birthday. Also, there's Marinette's friend, Alia. She's important, just trust me. I just need to get my hands on Tutankhamun's scepter and recite the spell. It's a priceless historical object, not a toy. Exactly, it's reverse psychology. All of the priceless artifacts are left outside unprotected so people think they're fake. And all the fake historical artifacts are behind the glass. That's why National Treasure is such an unrealistic movie. Everyone knows the Declaration of Independence would just be left out in the open. It's probably in the gift shop, if we're gonna be honest. Alia runs a blog where she tries to deduce the true identity of Ladybug. Spoiler alert, she sucks at her job. Season one is pretty formulaic, where it has the villain of the week set up. Every episode has a new person who gets akumatized and Marinette and Adrian figure out how to defeat them. Gotta go, a superhero's work is never done. Damsels in distress, ladies in waiting. I've got a lot more saving to do. You can thank me later. You know, Cat Noir is kind of cringy. He is not. Don't you dare say that about Cat Noir. He is sweet and flirty and romantic. Oh, sure. Little lady. M ladybug. Bugaboo. Stop it. No. And now for the pussy. Huh. Weird. It paused. You have got to get better control of your emotions. Haha, <laughs> get it? Because because it's a cameo of the original cover for the comic book, since it was supposed to be a comic book before it was a show. Hmm, I wonder where he'd be. Mm, he's got fencing club after school, that's why he didn't pick up! This stopped being a crush and became stalking real fast. I shall reign supreme! The Akuma must be in his sword! How are we gonna get a hold of it? How do you... Plan to break his sword. You'd be surprised how many things she breaks in this show. Hearts included. 
Can I lend a helping paw? Yeah, cover me. Hurry up, my lady. Welcome to my home. My name is Marinette. 欢迎来到我的家。我的名字叫马里内特。欢迎来到我的家。我的名字叫马里内特。What do you know? I've been using a similar app for me to learn Spanish. Bienvenidos. Soy llamo leyenda de negativo. All I could think about was Adrian. Hey, Adrian's coming to my house. <gasps> Adrian's coming. Huh. Weird. It paused again. So if you're wondering how, why two 14-year-olds have superpowers, apparently there's a bunch of miraculous that grants powers to people, and so this ancient old guy has the miraculous and is looking for successors, and he happened to bump into Marinette, and as well as Adrian, looking for people with the drive to help others. So when Hawkmoth sent his first Akuma, they received their miraculous. Apparently, if one person has both the black cat and ladybug miraculous, they get absolute. Power, and thus Hawk Moth keeps trying to get their miraculous every episode. I've never been to school before. I've never had friends. It's all sort of new to me. <laughs> ah, yes, love at first sight. Fast forward to modern day, Adrian finds there's a secret vault behind his father's painting, and inside is the ancient book of special knowledge about the miraculous. And Marinette and Tiki sees that Adrian has the super special book, and there's this one girl who is crushing on Adrian, just like everyone else. But she's actually important. Not only did Ladybug save my life, we've become very close friends. I'm the descendant of a Vixen superheroine myself, Copina. She gets acumatized, and her power is that she can make illusions. And uses it to look like an even better superhero than Ladybug. They eventually defeat her, like always. Forget it, Ladybug. You were right. We'll never be friends. She's still angry. You're not done with Volpina yet, Ladybug. Surprise, surprise! She becomes a recurring villain. I'm really sorry, Marinette, but its information is invaluable.、Huh? It contains all the secrets of the miraculous powers. It's sacred and extremely dangerous in the wrong hands. He needs it back. Please, who is he? The Great Guardian. So she finally meets the super ancient old guy, and now the plot is actually progressing. And this is when it stops being as formulaic as it usually is, and starts being an actual show. For the good of all humanity, we are chosen in childhood and trained for many years, especially for this mission. I made the mistake. The Guardian's temple was destroyed. Two of the miraculous were lost that day. The butterfly. And the peacock. And so they know that whoever had the book is most likely Hawk Moth. So Hawk Moth acclimatizes himself in order to throw Ladybug and Cat Noir off his trail, making them believe that there's no way he could actually be Hawk Moth because Hawk Moth acclimatized him. And oh my gosh, that's so smart! And he still gets defeated by a couple of fourteen-year-olds. Powerful fourteen-year-olds. Adrian and Marinette are actually really good foils. Marinette has a loving family, while Adrian is alone and has an overly controlling father. I really like their dynamic when they aren't superheroes. Hello. <gasps> Sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you. I don't feel like being a superhero tonight, and I also don't feel like being alone tonight. Would you mind if I hung out here for a little while? Wow. That would be a lovely beginning to some fanfic. Jokes aside, the love dynamic between them is incredibly well written. Them not knowing they're in love with each other, but still managing to express their feelings, is both heartwarming and heart wrenching. It's one of the most engaging love angles that I've seen, especially since I've gotten to a point where I expect a love angle to be shoehorned in. But in this case, it's really the main draw of the show. Then, after facing against a prodigy fencer named Kagami, who happens to look very similar to Marinette, and I'm sure she won't show up again. There's absolutely no way they would add another love interest to keep things interesting, right? Right? She and her mother just moved to Paris. How incredible!、Uh -huh. <laughs> How convenient that in the short amount of time, Adrian managed to take off his seatbelt. Just for him to dramatically fall out of the car. What surprises me is how often Ladybug uses Cat Noir's belt to defeat bad guys in season two. It's almost like she'll take any excuse to take off his belt. Just in time for the party. It's Grandma. Oh, am 
I attracted to this? No. Am I? No. I never got a chance to open it with all that was going on. Uh, I always carry the lucky charm you gave me wherever I go, and I think it works pretty well. I figured it was my turn to make one for you. They're so cute! I know! There's no way I can wear this! Yeah, I've always found that little bell so ridiculous. Then again, the costume is what you really wanted deep down, isn't it? Wait, you mean Adrian chooses to wear a skin-tight leather suit? I tried to tell you. Yes, hello, CPS? I downloaded a great app that analyzed some recordings I had of her talking. It turns out she's a girl our age. <laughs> their power has to somehow hide their identities more than we think, or at least make them for forget key features of them, because how is this not obvious? Clark Kent glasses can only do so much. Did everyone think they were just short adults? In an episode where Alia's little sister get akumatized, Ladybug and Cat Noir have trouble fighting them all since they can multiply. So Marinette goes to Master Fu looking for guidance, and he offers her another miraculous to give to someone so that she trusts to help with this enemy. So she gives Alia the miraculous of the fox, and now, at least temporarily, Alia is a superhero, and she looks like that one girl who was using the Fox Miraculous, but this one is the real Miraculous, the other one was a fake one. And her power is still illusion, and uses it to make a big amusement park to lure the kids. But Alia has to give her Miraculous back at the end of the episode, yet she becomes a regularly occurring hero. Apparently there's this thing where you can give Kwame's special potions and get a new power up until it's fully digested. And I can't tell if they added this to spice up the show because people like new transformations or if it's just to add more designs for possible toys. But even then, I don't think there's that many toys or merchandise for Miraculous that I've seen. And Marinette creates macaroon potions so that she can transform if needed. And I already thought macaroons were magical. Now it gives it a whole new meaning. In one episode, there's a villain that kisses people and turns them into kissing zombies, which I would assume would be a great episode to talk about sexual harassment since that's literally all it is, but instead it focuses on Chloe being a total bitch. And then they introduce Luca, who plays the guitar and has cool hair and makes Marinette stumble all over her words. But they wouldn't add another love interest for Marinette just to keep things interesting, right? Right? What was possibly the most jarring is that Adrian's dad, Gabriel, totally not Hawk Moth Agrest, actually has a lot of moments with Adrian where he's actually a good dad. I fully expected him to just be a total butthead, but he slowly learns how to be a better parent. Oh my god, Hawk Moth has the most character development. What's going on, Adrian? Do you ever get the feeling that you're stuck, Kagami? That things will never, ever change? The biggest mistake a fencer can make isn't choosing the wrong technique. It's choosing the wrong target. Change targets. Oh. Oh no. They are alternate love interests to keep the plot interesting. Yarr! Button down the hatches. The ship is sinking. It's about a girl. Just been friends, you know. Until recently. Till recently? She's got dark, silky hair, deep and mysterious eyes. It's Kagami. You know what? That's what you get for not asking him out earlier. Huh? Oh no, wait. Luca has moves. He may even be charming. The only reason you can't stay on your feet is your hesitation. I never hesitate. Yep. Kagami just became my favorite character. In season two, there's this annoying fashionista that bosses everyone around, and you find out that Hawk Moth is doing evil stuff because he's trying to resurrect his wife, or maybe to wake her up or something. Is she dead or in a coma? They don't actually go into it much. She gets akumatized and turns Adrian into gold, and so now Cat Noir can't help. Marinette has trouble beating her, so she goes to Master Fu again. And what a better opportunity than to have a new superhero. She tries giving it to Alia, but that doesn't work. Plague ignores Master Fu's words and proceeds to ruin literally everything, but now Ladybug can get the Akuma and fix everything, so it's cool. And Chloe ends up finding the Miraculous that Marinette dropped. I can't keep putting our son in danger. I'll never be able to fulfill my wish without Ladybug and Cat Noir's Miraculous. I'm giving you up, Nuru. Once again, he is the best character. 
And Gabriel Agrest makes a public appearance for the first time since his wife quote unquote disappeared, and now it looks like he's going to be a proper father. Marinette gets invited to New York to be a fashion designer, but. I'm exceptional too. The only exceptional thing about you, my dear, is your mother. And so Chloe transforms in front of everyone. Then Chloe proceeds to put everyone in danger just so she can save them Spider-Man style. And Hawk Moth comes back, so that didn't last long. Chloe fails and ends up needing Cat Noir and Ladybug to fix everything. And she gets akumatized because they found out she put everyone in danger. They figure out how to beat her eventually, and it's actually kind of sad because Chloe only ever really wants her mother's approval, but everything she does won't work and gives back the miraculous and actually feels remorseful about her actions. For the first time ever. And Chloe confronts her mother about how her mom is you know, terrible. Why don't you love me, Mom? And they decide to try and connect by staying in Paris. Is everyone just forgetting that Chloe literally endangered everyone on that train? I mean, like, Chloe should go to jail. Did, are we just glossing over that? Yes. Why? She's rich. Oh, yeah. Well, Nino and Alia are also dating. Nino gets a miraculous, too. It's even Master Fu's Kwame. He turns into a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? Also, yes. Can we just go back to giving Chloe more character development? I'm sure Marinette probably didn't exactly mean what she said. Oh, it's not just her. Nobody likes me. I have no friends. I'm useless. <sighs> Wait, is Chloe going to be a reoccurring hero? Oh, trust me. There's a lot going on with Chloe. Well, at least they made her character better. What? Liar! Traitor! Coward! Because Ladybug is the only true hero unlike her mediocre imitations, such as Volpina. Oh hey! She's back! So she gets akumatized again, and she uses it to create an illusion of Ladybug killing Cat Noir. And then he akumatizes his assistant, giving her the power to boost other people's powers, and then boosts his own powers, and akumatizes basically everyone. Now they get to reuse all those models they've been building up. Now that's clever writing. And Marinette goes to Master Fu again and grabs all the ones who she knows she can trust. Now we get a big hero team up, and we get a cool action sequence with some slow-mo. This whole battle is surprisingly clever. Hawkmoth uses all his old akumatized victims to sow more negative emotions in people to keep akumatizing them, making it to where they can never catch up. And all the heroes end up getting akumatized, so the uh, team up doesn't last long. And so their plan is to use the city's cameras to show everyone that Cat Noir isn't dead to slow down the akumatizations. And after almost getting akumatized themselves, they manage to take his cane and take away his boosted powers. Now the heroes are back to help take down Hawkmoth, but his assistant takes one of the Miraculous that Hawkmoth stole several years ago and takes control of Hawkmoth. A feather, the second Miraculous that Master Fu lost, was a peacock. I told you never to use the peacock Miraculous. I had to save you. It's damaged, it's way too dangerous. Thank you, Natalie. And Marinette gets the courage to kiss Adrian on the cheek, but still, that was actually amazing. Oh my gosh. Seeing the big schemes that Hawk Moth comes up with is entertaining enough as it is, but also seeing that Hawk Moth is also a, a properly done sympathetic character, which is rare, and how he's driven by his grief. While I watch this, I'm not really rooting for either side. I'm okay if Hawk Moth wins at this point. And seeing all these new designs from Miraculous is a treat in and of itself. This season finale is one of the best I've seen, and I cannot wait for what they do in season three. Lila's back now, so she's a reoccurring villain, and she gets a new power called Chameleon, where she turns into people she kisses. Yeah, this episode is awkward. What? 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 Coming soon to theaters. The real Cat Noir and Ladybug won't be able to make it to tonight's premiere. Really? Thomas? You put yourself into your own show? <sighs> Everyone wants to be Stan Lee. I like how we add so many Easter eggs in this show, though. Definitely makes creating YouTube videos easier.
Konbanwa Tsurugi-san. Dozo Yoroshiku Onigashimasu. You know, I hear anime fans joke all the time when Japanese people try to speak English, but we don't do much better speaking Japanese in our shows. I mean, I took Japanese class in college for like two semesters, and I had to hear Adrian twice to understand what he was saying. No hate to Bryce Pappenbrook. You're a wonderful voice actor. I'm just saying I'm tired of people making fun of foreigners learning English. You're going to show everyone who you really are with a power as limitless as your imagination. I want them all to see what a director is capable of. Wait, did you really just put yourself in this episode so you can complain that no one talks about you? Oh my god, I can't tell if you thought it was just a fun idea or if you were honestly salty that your fans weren't talking about you enough. Like, Dude, there were better ways to do this. This looks petty. That being said, this was one of the most entertaining episodes in this season. I don't know, I'm probably jumping to conclusions, but still, it gives off a weird vibe. Okay. Who wouldn't want to animate themselves doing a Kamehameha? I can't blame them for that. Ah, yes, everyone needs a magical girl transformation. Even the fucking director. They have an episode where they switch Miraculous, and why didn't they do this sooner? Oh my god, this is amazing. I didn't think I'd like seeing Marinette in Cat Noir's outfit. And Adrian in the Ladybug outfit. I want them to do this more often. What are you doing? I'm searching for alternate reality fanfics where the Miraculous are switched. You just want to make a fanfic video? <gasps> There's an episode where Luca gets akumatized and then confesses to Marinette. You're the most extraordinary girl, Marinette. You are the music that's been playing inside my head since the day we first met. Just... date him! No! Okay, maybe. If you made it this far, then don't forget that I'm doing a goodie bag that ships out the 1st of December. You can get an acrylic pin of the channel logo, three stickers, and a custom trading card of Iris from Lolly Rock, illustrated by me. You just gotta fill out the Google form below. It's PayPal only, and well, let's get back to the video. Oh, I'm sorry, Chloe. I might never be able to let you be Queen Bee again. I did everything you asked me to. It's too dangerous for you and your loved ones because Hawk Moth knows that you're Queen Bee. I know that I'll be Queen Bee again someday. I will always be Queen Bee. <laughs> have to be inside the building, Oblivio. You know, Hawk Moth gives each of his minions a special villain name. Does he just have a big list of these at the ready or does he come up with that on the spot? Luca gets the Snake Miraculous. That lets him travel back in time, but only five minutes. Everyone's getting a Miraculous nowadays. But not before Adrian gets it. It's complicated. Just watch the episode. Basically, Adrian is a simp and Marinette is a simp. I'm actually also Cat Noir and I've been in love with you since our eyes first met. Then Max gets the Horse Miraculous, which allows him to teleport. <laughs> Finally, a black superhero who doesn't have weather powers. And Hawk Moth discovers Master Fu's identity when an ancient monster tries to eat the Miraculous. And they discover Master Fu's old temple. Your training is complete, Marinette, and the time has come for me to prepare you to become the new guardian. Now that Hawk Moth knows who I am, it's too dangerous for me to live here. There's also this one time where they break an ancient Egyptian stone to find out that someone from the future was trapped in the past and trapped in that stone. And explains that Ladybug and Cat Noir form a super team in the future and Alex, character that hasn't really been important until literally right now, meets her future self. And Hawk Moth sends someone from the future, which means they never actually beat Hawk Moth, which also means the show will never end! You're right on the first count, but not on the second. The Miraculous are not for you. I said I was sent by the Hawk Moth of the future, but I never said the Hawk Moth of the future was you. Okay, I guess they do beat Hawk Moth in a sense. Uh, ladybug? Why would Ladybug leave me a gift from Marinette? Ladybug and Marinette are the same person! I can't wait for Marinette to figure out a way to make Adrian think she's not Ladybug. Minibug, something happened today that caused a major disaster in the future. Ah, time travel. That's how. So it turns out that Adrian knowing her identity messes up the future. Your relationship with my son is detrimental to the Gabriel Agrest brand. I demand that you stop seeing him at once. Adrian, forgive me, we're just... We're just not right for each other. We love each other. I don't love you. Anymore. But how did you know? I thought our identities were supposed to remain a secret. Uh, 
It's Adrian, your son. He's... he's Cat Noir. You guys get it. You know, seeing this possible future is kind of heart-wrenching, because all it really shows is that Marinette and Adrian can't actually be together. So the whole love dynamic is kind of ruined, even though this is just one possible future, it still shows that the writers plan to never have them be together. Anyway, she destroys his Akuma, and then just changes the past. And surprisingly enough, even though this episode was the most heart-wrenching to watch, it's still not the end of the season. Using a broken miraculous ends up breaking its wearer. I don't care, Gabriel. Not at that cost. Never at that cost again. Oh, so that's what happened to his wife. I hate you! Marinette has trouble with her emotions and kind of seems like she starts giving up on Adrian. Whenever she's backed up against a wall, Ladybug engages others to fight by her side. The guardian of the miraculous is who she seeks every time. And Hawk Moth figures out where all the miraculous are kept. I also like Master Fu's transformation design. Uh, what about me? You were supposed to give me a miraculous! And Hawk Moth uses Chloe's anger to enlist her. And now he has the miraculous and can easily gain her trust. And now I can use a new Akuma to make your powers even stronger. I'm giving you the power to reign over Paris and command your very own army of superheroes. And Chloe starts controlling people. All the Miraculous Wearers, come to me! Wow, I can't believe they didn't think to do this sooner. Now everyone's who's ever had a Miraculous works for her. Everyone fights each other, and Cat Noir steals the Snake Miraculous so he can go back five minutes in the past and manages to destroy Chloe's Akuma. Ladybug. You are the best Miraculous Holder I've ever met, and you will be the most magnificent of Guardians. What? I, Wang Fu, hereby relinquish the Miracle Box and name Ladybug the new Guardian. No! And then Ladybug just... takes back Chloe's Miraculous. There's a deciphered version of the Grimoire stored on the Guardian's tablet. We can fix the Peacock Miraculous. Who are you? Has he... Lost his memory? The memory gets erased when they pass on the box to protect the secret identities of the miraculous holders. Wow. That's a terrible thing to put on someone else. And even though it's cool that Ladybug is the new master, that's horrible. Marinette finds a letter from Master Fu, his final goodbyes, and Master Fu can live a normal life with the person he's always loved. So the ending is bittersweet. Miraculous Ladybug is a show that's great for fans. But if you try jumping into the series, it takes a long time to properly get invested. And the part that obsessed me most is that Merida and Adrian have the least character development out of all the characters that should have development. Heck, the fact that Marinette is hinting that she might give up on, a on pursuing Adrian is probably the most character development that she'll ever have. And Adrian has had literally no growth whatsoever. He's a fun character, but so far, Chloe and Hawk Moth have had more character development than both Adrian and Marinette combined. The love dynamic between Adrian and Marinette and Cat Noir and Ladybug was smart, and I feel like they explored it fully, and I feel like they should be done with it. Like, how much more do we need? It's like, it, I want them to continue and not just beat around the exact same bush. But if they insist on backpedaling and having Marinette constantly doting over Adrian, that'll only take away everything that's progressed for her. Now, a lot of you are probably sitting on the edge of your seat hoping that I'm gonna talk about season four and Thomas Astruck and Chloe. I'm gonna have that be in its own video entirely. Now, if you plan to watch this series, don't use Netflix. Okay, you can use Netflix, but all the episodes are out of order and you're gonna have to look up on, on Wikipedia or something because that's what I had to do for this. And I would have been lost making this video if I didn't have Isabella with me, because this was, there's, there's a lot more around like the community and stuff that I wasn't aware of. And like having you just guide me on like, hey, here's what, here's what's important. Just pointing it out as we watch it along. It made this video so much easier. Also probably made this video a lot longer, but. <laughs> yeah. Now it's very normal for TV series to have several standalone episodes in order to have reruns on channels for TV, that of which Miraculous has. And the reason that they said that it's out of order is because they didn't give them a, a, an order list 
because it's supposed to be watched in any order, because it's a kid's show, but even kid's shows have an order, just so long as there is those, those singular episodes that they can play on rerun, doesn't matter, and I don't understand his logic, and it kind of sounds like he's just making up an excuse because he probably messed up somewhere, so I don't believe that. I think the best description for Miraculous is that it is a great show for fans. It is clearly constructed to where it appeals to people who want to fill in the gaps. And by that, I mean Tumblr fanfiction writers. And when I say the show doesn't do enough, I mean they don't do enough with the characters, which is, you know, the entire crux of a show. And usually when they construct a show like this, it garners the attention of those kind of people on those platforms, and, this, and those kind of shows typically thrive, because so long as you have an active community, a show usually does better. It doesn't actually matter if it's what kind of community it is. And that's my initial assumption of what this show is doing, the moment I pass season one. If you take it from me, the best way to approach this show if you're new is just to have it on in the background while you do other things, especially for season one. There's not a lot that is really that big of a talking point. A lot of the episodes don't really have that big of a payoff and unless you find the specific key episodes that the community usually blows up over, or at best, you need to make sure you watch the season finales because that's when the most plot progresses. And they will always mercilessly tease you with Adrian almost realizing that Marinette likes him because it's very obvious, but then realize, but then going back to the whole, ah, I'm dumb and she's just a friend, which could either be interpreted as he just legitimately doesn't want to be, have a relationship with her and he's just trying to avoid the awkward situation of telling her, I don't know, but like, we all know he's just dumb. The best way to approach this show is really just to not take it as seriously as the fandom does. Even when I tried to look into the accusations against Thomas Astruck, a lot of what I found what kind of seemed like the fandom was misinterpreting things that were never actually in the show because they're projecting what they want because that's what fan fiction, do, fan fiction fans do. Like, I think the best example was how there was a, a little bit of a controversy around 14 year olds wearing skin tight suits because uh, perverted, but also like the majority of designs for superheroes have skin tight suits. So I just assumed that was just a carryover of what pretty much every superhero in the world is designed as. I know people were upset when Chloe was talking to Marinette's Chinese uncle and she kept mixing up Chinese culture and Japanese culture and just being generally ignorant. And when the and when the fans reached out to Thomas Astruck about it and he said that she said that because she's just dumb, which is true, it very much fits her character. And Chloe is portrayed as the bad person and so I, I got the sense that because it was Chloe making all these mistakes, kids would associate, ah, the bad person is making these mistakes, I shouldn't do that. But more importantly, if they do decide that they resonate with Chloe and don't care about the differences between these cultures. I feel like it's more of a problem with the parenting rather than the show at that point. There's a lot of stuff around the show that you can find the fandom talking about. Now, I usually avoid these kind of topics because I don't like drama. And most criticisms a community has with its creators are usually mostly invalidated when they send death threats to the director, like you, like the fandom in this fandom did. All in all, I don't feel like there is a side I can take. I just wanna talk about the writing and the construction of the characters like how Marinette obsesses way too much over Adrian to the point where it's not only annoying, but also unhealthy. But other than that, I never really felt like the characters were even handled all that bad. So I feel like a lot of the situations the fandom, a lot of the problems the fandom has is usually just blown up in the fandom. So leave your opinions in the comments below. I only had, I haven't been in the community that long, so I could just not know a lot of things, but given how long I have been in the community, this is my takeaway from it so far. You can follow Isabella on her Instagram and her TikTok. You can also follow me on my, all my social medias. The problem is this has to be like all one, one flowing scene. What do you know? I've been using a similar app for me to learn Spanish. Bienvenidos. <laughs> I'm ready.
probably go harder, honestly. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. I know you asked me to. Okay. Lots of me talking. Yeah, it is kind of your YouTube channel. I mean, like, the. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm searching for alternate reality fanfic where the miraculous are switched. You know they do that in a video. You know. <laughs> yes. Cut. <laughs> I know. We just. I just showed it. <laughs> you want to make a video of making fanfics? Fuck. Reading. <laughs> this is the most lines I have, and I can't do it. Just say you want to make a fanfic video, because I don't know if I'm gonna read or if I'm gonna write one. Okay. I'm losing my place. I'm panicking. <laughs> Zoom. You creep! You're a little creep. She was licking my back and I was like, what the fuck? 